Okay. Well, welcome, um, Brittany, welcome. We are here today from AIFS Study Abroad to talk about uh, Study Abroad 101. Um, so my name is Katie Ryan. I am based in Philadelphia and work with many of our partner schools in the Mid-Atlantic and the South. Um, I'm also joined today by my colleague, Maura. If you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Hi there. I'm Maura Castles. I'm the Regional Vice President of University Relations in the Northeast. So I work with our university partners in New York, New Jersey, and in uh, New England. So um, um, I get to work with all of our lovely institutions in that region. Great. Um, so today we are joined by some of our alumni ambassadors who studied on a variety of our programs. I will introduce, let them introduce themselves in just a few minutes. Um, we will begin shortly with an overview of AIFS programs. Um, we're happy to share any additional information or answer any questions about um, the programs that we offer, the application process, any sort of technical questions afterwards as well. But this session will be primarily focused on our, our student experiences abroad and our alumni sharing their personal experiences. Okay, so we are AIFS Study Abroad. Uh, we were founded in 1964, so we've been around for quite a long time. Um, and yeah, feel free, to, feel free to share questions in the chat. We can get to those in just a few moments. Um, we operate in over 35 program cities around the world. We are on almost every continent around the world. So we have a wide variety of program locations and options. We do offer um, multi-country traveling programs that um, take part in several destinations, particularly during the summer term. So that's a really unique option as well. Uh, generally, our programs have no language requirement. So um, no prereq prerequisite for foreign language knowledge before studying abroad. Um, most of our non-language courses are taught in English, so we do have quite a variety of options um, if, you do, if you don't have those foreign language skills. We do work with all majors. We offer a really wide variety of courses across all of our programs and can help point you in the right direction if you're looking for any particular academic area. Students who are eligible to study with us are um, high school graduates anywhere through um, college seniors. So we offer a wide variety depending on the year in the school that you are. Um, all of our fees are also guaranteed in US dollars. So you don't need to worry about currency exchange for the program fees themselves. We try to make our program fee as all-inclusive as possible. Um, so our housing is guaranteed and arranged by AIFS. We usually offer residence style housing or homestays or the choice between the two in most of our locations. Um, all of our programs do include some form of meal plan or stipend. So this does look a little bit different um, for every location. It may be meals with your homestay family. It may be a dining card on campus, um, just depending on the program structure. We do have an AIFS resident director and on-site staff in all of our locations. So um, you have many resources to assist you throughout your time abroad. Um, of course, in your day-to-day -day life, but in, in case of any emergency as well, you're very well supported. All of our programs include um, excursions. So these may go um, to a different city in the country where you're studying or even outside of the country where you're studying um, for about a weekend or day trip. Additionally, different cultural activities are included throughout the week. Um, these are usually in the city where you're studying, like cooking classes, museum visits, outdoor activities. Um, as you can imagine, this looks a little bit different in London than in Costa Rica. So these do vary quite a bit, again, based on the location. For all of our programs, we offer an optional flight and transportation package. So you can actually book your round trip international flight through AIFS. We can assist you with that process. Um, and as our alumni hopefully here today can attest to, we have um, a very, a very all-encompassing alumni ambassador program. We try our best to support our alumni when, when you return to the U.S. and help um, you all talk about your experience to future study abroad students as well. So after today's session, if you have additional questions, we're happy to connect you um, to the alumni here today or to other alumni who may have studied in your um, location of interest. We do have some, uh, some additional webinars coming up. We have a Funding Your Study Abroad Experience 101 session on February 9th from 2 to 3. If you want more information about 
scholarships and funding opportunities, two to three Eastern time, I should say. Um, this link at the bottom of the page includes our links to our AIFS blog, our social channels, YouTube, um, lots of ways to learn more about any questions you might have about studying abroad. So with that, I will open this up to our lovely alumni ambassadors. I would love for each of you to introduce yourself, um, to say your name, home university, your study abroad location. Uh, we can start with Alexis, you're first on my screen. So you are up first in introductions. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Hello, everyone. My name is Alexis Voissard, and I am an undergrad student at Wright State University in Dayton, Ohio. And with AIFS, I picked London in the fall of 2019. Great, how about Natalie? I see you up next. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, so I'm Natalie Gately. I am currently a senior at the University of South Carolina, um, my second semester, so it's going by fast. Um, but I am very, um, you know, proud to say that I studied abroad through AIFS um, in the spring 2020 semester in Salamanca, Spain. So I'll be talking a bit more about that uh, later in this presentation. Great. Thank you, Natalie and Rachel. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Ransom. I'm a recent graduate of Hampton University in Hampton, Virginia, and I studied abroad in Barcelona, Spain in the spring of 2020. Great. And Alina. Um, hello, my name is Alina. I am a sophomore at the University of California, Berkeley, and I studied abroad with AIFS in Granada, Spain in fall of 2018. Thank you so much. So I would love to hear from all of you um, as to why you were first interested in study abroad and why you ultimately decided to study abroad. So I can start with that one. Um, the reason I decided to study abroad was mostly because I recognized that if I wanted to get out of my comfort zone of like my daily routine in my university, that I had to go somewhere that would completely tear apart what I thought was a normal day to day routine. And that's what study abroad did for me. In, in addition to that, um, with the classes I got to take and the people I got to meet, I got, was able to develop more of a global mindset. And that's something I really desire, not only for my personal life and how I'm able to like interact with people, but also for my like potential career and how well I'm able to do in that setting too. Fantastic, thank you for sharing. Any other alumni like to, to answer that question? Um, yeah, I would just like to add on, um, you know, I definitely went abroad for some of the same reasons, but also um, something that I considered when, when choosing, you know, what program to go abroad with, um, or, you know, through my university or with AIFS, um, I kind of wanted to meet people who were studying abroad from all over the US, um, whereas, you know, going with my university would just be all the students from South Carolina. Um, so it was definitely a great thing. I now have friends from all over the country that I met um, while in Spain. So definitely an amazing reason for why I studied abroad. That's a great point. Thank you. Yep, we do work with universities all around the US. So I, I think that um, that's sort of a factor that students don't may not think about when you're considering a study abroad program. But I know that many of our alumni remain in touch with their US um, classmates as well. Okay, so how did you all select your study abroad location? Um, yeah, I can take this one. Um, so I'm actually a Spanish minor. Um, I've been learning it since seventh grade um, and I've never had the opportunity to actually go to a Spanish speaking country and practice it in person. Um, you know, it's a very different experience in uh, a country versus a classroom. Um, and so I knew I wanted to go to a Spanish speaking country. Originally, I had chosen um, Chile through AIFS. Um, because for whatever reason, it just really stuck in my mind that I really wanted to go there. Um, but I talked to my advisor and I kind of, you know, looked at the dates and the classes. Um, and, you know, I think uh, the dates didn't really line up for me. So I uh, figured out that Spain's uh, programs all lined up. Um, so I think it's just very important to, you know, choose a country that you're interested in, but also, you know, figure out the logistics too, you know, and that's very important to actually make sure that it's gonna work out for you. Um, and I looked into the uh, different Spain programs you know, AIFS offers a lot. Um, Rachel will talk about some later, but um, the Salamanca program, I think, was a great fit for me just because it wasn't, um, you know, a major city, um, but it also wasn't, you know, in the middle of nowhere. We're still connected to a lot of resources, um, and I just heard phenomenal things about the resident directors, which I can definitely attest to uh, after being there, 
Um, so yeah, just a lot of um, positive things about Salamanca um, and really happy that I ended up choosing it. Perfect, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I know that um, many students we work with may have a location in mind, but it is important to consider maybe um, the classes that are available in each location, um, if you're at all flexible to various cities, if you have um, you know certain characteristics in mind, but a little bit of flexibility, I think that's sort of the best approach. I mean, we can certainly make it work if you're, um, if you've always wanted to go to London, that's certainly not to deter you, but definitely consider all of those factors when you are choosing a location and a program. Would anybody else like to decide how they um, chose their location? I'm sure uh, I can jump in. Um, I definitely agree with a lot of what Natalie said. Um, I was definitely considering those things when I chose to go to Granada. Um, I think some other important things are just to look at the options that are available through the programs at the different sites, because they're not all the same. Um, I chose Granada um, because it was a small city and somewhat isolated, so I felt I could really get immersed in the culture. It had a lot of different housing options from an apartment to a homestay to a dorm. Um, I chose homestay, um, but I appreciated that it had those options. And it was also one of the cheapest locations in Spain, um, which, was a big plus. Um, so I think that really, you know, looking at everything, researching culture, but then also re researching programs is important uh, when, when choosing your location. Great, yes. Uh, cost of living is an important consideration to beyond um, the program details, what your daily costs for food and housing might be. Um, so certainly make sure to take that into consideration as well. Would anybody like to share any details about um, the classes that you selected while you were studying abroad and what that process looked like? Yeah, I can kind of share some of my experiences with picking classes. So picking classes abroad kind of falls in line with why I kind of wanted to study abroad in the first place. And it's funny that Natalie had mentioned about um, like making sure that the logistics of like study abroad fits within like your graduation plan and making sure that like classes can transfer. So, you know, I started planning to go abroad pretty much a year in advance. And that was the first thing that I wanted to figure out. I wanted to figure out like, will my classes transfer, you know, for credit that would be accepted by my university. And I had a meeting with my advisor at my university and she told me like, oh, we can't accept any of these classes except for just like general education courses. And it really kind of tore me down because I was like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do now? And I had felt like I invested so much time into like researching AIFS and what they could offer me. And it was kind of like the one opportunity in my life where I kind of had to like let go of like the perfectionism and just kind of taking that risk and just saying, you know what? I only have like four, you know, when I went abroad, I was a junior. It was in my junior year, my first semester junior year. And I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna get this chance again. Who cares if my credits just count as, you know, gen eds, even though I had already completed all of them. So it's kind of like for me, just a way of like letting go and just like being a total like adventurer risk taker. So, but the classes that I did take actually fell in line with some of my professional goals and some of my like program because I'm an English major. So I got to take British fantasy writing and um, world literature, which were really interesting. And of course, all the courses that I signed up for were like nothing that was offered at my home, home university. And I also took a course um, called History of London, which I would encourage any of you interested in study abroad to take some kind of course with a field trip component, because I think I wanted to study abroad too to get that non-traditional classroom environment experience. And I think that's what's really good about AIFS is that they guarantee those experiences with the courses. And it was really cool being able to go out to a different part of London and actually like see with our own eyes what we were kind of learning and reading from in textbooks. So I thought that was really cool. And then I also signed up for like a total crazy class called broadcasting, voice for acting and broadcasting, which I had never taken an acting theater course before in my life. And it was one of those things, again, like I'm just gonna have fun while I was abroad. And now I feel like, you know, I'm using my voice right now. Um, and I still use those skills every day, especially with this, you know, whole virtual world that we're in. So I feel like everything that I did was, you know, I totally did not regret at all. So I would encourage, you know, 
students to try to make things work within their, you know, graduation, you know, in terms of like when you need to graduate on time and like finishing course requirements, because that is obviously the most beneficial, but to also, you know, relax, have fun while you're abroad and take some fun classes too. Perfect. I'm sure the lesson in relinquishing some control served you well once you were studying abroad too. Um, but thanks for bringing that point up. It's really, it's important that um, you all work with your study abroad office and your academic advisor so that you have a sense of um, how courses will transfer back for you and what requirements you may be fulfilling at your home school. But um, Alexis, Alexis, that's a great point about being able to take um, courses maybe outside of your major or outside of your areas of interest at your home university too. Would anybody else like to share um, their experience choosing classes abroad? I completely agree with Alexis. Um, I think the top priority is to make sure you're still going to graduate on time because you don't want anything to hinder that. But once you recognize that you can, if you have to take a class and it's not going to contribute, but you know it's going to contribute to you personally, I think it's totally worth it. That um, happened to me when I was signing up for my classes. I wanted to take things that were aligned with my major and what I want to do professionally, such as international marketing, international business, and cross-cultural management. But my school wasn't going to take the credits just because that was their choice. And then in the end, they ended up taking them. So it was beneficial to me graduating, but also to me like learning what uh, more about what I wanted to do and meeting people in that field on an international basis. So it was really good. Great, thank you. Okay, next, how did you all stay connected um, with your family and friends while you were studying abroad? One uh, for me, one of the main ways that I stayed connected like in the realm of like applications was through WhatsApp. That was extremely beneficial, especially if we weren't communicating from an iPhone to iPhone basis. Um, just because phone plans change and things can become really expensive when it comes to like the international calls and texts, but also FaceTime, if it is iPhone to iPhone connection really worked because it's over um, Wi-Fi. But one thing that was extremely difficult was the time difference. So I live on the East Coast and in Spain, I was six hours ahead of my family. So it was difficult to find a good time for us to be able to communicate because like if it's morning there, it's almost like afternoon or getting to be night where I was. So that was hard, but making sure you schedule in time to like continue on the things that you always do, like talk to your family and friends is really important. Great. Yes, we are, are lucky to have so many free apps that make this a little bit easier uh, these days, but WhatsApp, um, iMessage are fantastic free apps with phone and video capabilities. Um, so I know that our students utilize those quite a bit studying abroad. Does anybody else have any other resources or advice you'd like to share on keeping in touch with your friends and family? Um, yeah, I would just like to say there's a lot of resources regarding, um, you know, SIM cards and stuff. You know, you can always ask your resident director or um, e even email them before you go abroad, just, you know, figure out um, a plan for what you're going to do. I personally didn't realize that it was going to be such a, um, a process to get your SIM card changed. But once I was in Salamanca, um, I really just reached out to the resident director and she pointed me down to the store, literally like down the block from the office. Um, and that was done in like a matter of 30 minutes. So, um, you know, it might seem daunting, but it's really not. Um, and it's definitely possible to, you know, keep in, in touch with both your friends um, from your hometown and university, so. Just to go on of what Natalie said, that was a really big deal for me and everyone in Barcelona as well. Not realizing the whole thing with the SIM card, meaning that like you have to switch your SIM card once you got to a different country and then getting there and having to do it was the biggest struggle because it's like, you're trying to move in, you're trying to get acclimated, you're trying to make sure you're eating and then you also have to fix your phone. So I think a good idea would be to check out your phone plan at home to see if they have an international plan that's affordable so that you don't even have to worry about it or create a plan prior to getting over to your study abroad location of how you're going to um, get your new SIM card or your new phone plan so you know what needs to be done and get it done before it's right. You not run out of time, but you just wait a week and it's like been a week and you haven't called anybody because you don't have a SIM card That because that was me. <laughs> That's a great point, Rachel. Um, so you'll of course wanna be in touch with your friends and family at home, but you also want an easy way to be in touch with um, anybody you may meet at your study abroad location. So it's really helpful to have a local number. Um, so our students often switch SIM cards into their existing US phone. Um, also, you can add an international plan to your US 
phone number before you go. Some students will get like a, a flip phone or a cheap kind of top up um, phone plan with a local international number. So there are a variety of approaches for that that we can definitely help you with throughout the pre-departure process. Um, what would you say was the best part of your experience abroad? That's a tough, a tough question. Yeah, this is like the hardest question you could ask. <laughs> There's so much to choose from. Um, but you know, I think if I had to choose just one, um, it would definitely be the fact that I stayed in a homestay. Um, I mean, it was just so amazing. I think I was definitely a little bit nervous prior to actually staying in a homestay um, because I hadn't had a roommate since freshman year of college. Um, and, you know, I never really stayed with a family that I wasn't actually related to, um, you know, before or ever. Um, but, you know, I got there and it was just so phenomenal. Like the food, first of all, was amazing. Um, and I mean, we had a roommate who was actually a student, an alumni of AIFS um, three years ago um, in that same exact homestay and loved it so much that she stayed um, another three years to continue on to her MBA in Salamanca. Um, and when I like learned that when I first moved in, I think that just really spoke to like how amazing the experience is that, you know, you would want to stay for another three years and the girl had no intention of, you know, leaving soon. Um, so I think, I mean, it was just a phenomenal experience. Our host mom literally walked us um, from our house to, um, you know, the main plaza and to meet everyone. And she uh, showed us all of her favorite restaurants, all of her favorite um, meals and everything. Um, and, you know, to this day, she still, uh, you know, she texts me, um, you know, Merry Christmas on, on uh, not Halloween, on Christmas <laughs> um, over WhatsApp. And she's just very sweet. And I think um, it's really, it's really heartwarming to know that, you know, if I were to ever go back to Salamanca, and I hope I do, um, I definitely have, you know, a familiar, you know, family face uh, to see. So it's, yeah, definitely one of my favorite experiences while studying abroad. Oh, I think you're muted. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Natalie. Um, yeah, we hear that a lot from students. I I would say almost any student who chooses a homestay frequently says that's their favorite aspect of the program. I know it can be a little bit more intimidating um, in the sense, as you said, Natalie, that you are living with a family that you don't know. Um, you may not be used to having roommates or roommates that you don't know for a few years. So um, it can be a little bit nerve wracking, but so many students you know, remain in touch with their homestay family for years and that really, adds even more depth to the program. Um, you get to see really how a local family lives day to day, go to restaurants, uh, cafes that you may not normally experience, practice your language in a more immersive way. So if you're at all interested, I would highly encourage um, all of you to consider that option. Oh, and can I add on? I forgot yeah, to mention. Please do. <laughs> so I, I mentioned that I was nervous about having a roommate, but um, the roommate matching process that AFS does was so amazing. I literally had a twin for a roommate. Um, I think just filling out the, um, you know, the application to have a roommate um, was really like, make sure you do it truthfully because then you'll end up with the best roommate that you could possibly have um, like I did. So I'm <laughs> very thankful for, you know, having just, just that whole process. So glad to hear that. Yes, we try our best to match to match you as best as possible. Would anybody else like to share their favorite, the best part of your experience abroad? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, I loved my homestay as well, but I think that the biggest or the things that I look back on most fondly were really the little things. I think when we talk about study abroad, we talk so much about like the big things that you're going to get to see and the big trips that you're going to take. Um, but for me, like when I look back at my time in Granada, like I just miss so much going to my local teteria and getting a tea and a baklava or, you know, walking past the Alhambra, which is this big Moorish castle right in the middle of the city um, or sitting on the couch and watching Spanish game shows with my host parents, like those little moments that you really can't get unless you're in a study abroad program and you're really, you know, being immersed in the culture. Um, those are the things that I remember the best and that I miss the most um, and that I really, you can't get again. Um, so I think like in studying abroad, um, those little experience you have just living in a different country and being part of a different culture and community are, are so crucial to the experience. I couldn't agree more with Alina. That was the biggest thing for me because I feel like 
just like through vacation type of traveling, you go, you get like put into these cultures for a hot second and you're enjoying yourself because it's new, but you kind of look around and you're seeing how other people, this is their daily life maybe. But being abroad, like you're there for such a long period of time that it becomes your place and your culture and your daily routine. So what I really enjoyed was my daily walk to class and passing the same people on the street every day or the same people on the metro and going to my grocery store every Monday and walking to the beach or doing this like all that just made it so special to the point where it's like now I'm back home and I feel like homesick like I'm missing my old home so that's just crazy to me how a place that seems so foreign can become so familiar to you and like also with that I think all of us have this connection to those locations for now like and forever and if we ever go back, it'll just feel like going back home. So I'm, I look forward to that in the future. That's perfect. I think you both brought up really what differentiates studying abroad from, from traveling, being able to um, learn so much about the culture and spend an extended period of time there to really you know, establish your local cafe and your habits and um, make those connections. I think that's really, as you both said, what sets the experience apart in many ways and what, what students remember. I know. That's what I remember too from my study abroad experience and what I what I always go back to. And you do still feel like a local when you go back um, and reverse culture, culture shock is certainly real too. And many students have almost a harder time adjusting back to the US than to their study abroad location, um, which is hopefully what we try to assist with in our alumni programming too. Um, are there any other tips or resources you all would like to share for being successful in your study abroad experience? I can share some. I think what helped me a lot was I was the kind of student who loves to be prepared as much as possible. And I really liked what set kind of AIFS apart from other like study abroad providers is I noticed that they have a lot of like utilize their social media really well. And I loved watching all of like the YouTube videos that they made. And I like how I got to see like actual students being able to share their experiences and not just, you know, having somebody who might oversee a program share their thoughts. Like I really wanted that firsthand student experience. So they're really good at, you know, encouraging students to share their stories and video platforms. And they also have a ton of blogs that you can read up. And I just like ate all that stuff up. Um, and I would encourage students to also just check out um, things on Pinterest um, and just really looking at firsthand accounts because those are going to be like your best like sources of information if you have like the little questions to like really big questions. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of right now. That's great. I want to mention um, our, ambas our ambassadors do fantastic Instagram takeovers. Um, the schedule of those upcoming events is listed on the page where you signed up for this event so you can see um, again that firsthand experience um, and hear from our, our alumni um, firsthand about their experience abroad through those. Anybody else like to share any tips or resources? Yes um, similarly to Alexis I was really obsessed with like looking up YouTube videos so I saw like lots and lots of vlogs of what goes on in Barcelona or people studying abroad there down to a point where I found my exact apartment I was going to be staying in, which was creepy, but it was nice because I knew what I was looking for too. Um, but other tips, one thing I would say is if you have an absolute like favorite hair product, skin product, things of that nature, I would say bring it because you might not be able to find it. But if you are flexible, be open to trying new products and things like that because you never know what you will like. Um, additionally, I would say don't be afraid to like reach out to your peers because odds are you guys are all in the same position like I know I came not knowing anyone on the trip and I know there are a lot of other people like that and so when you're able to make connections off of similarities something as simple as like not knowing other people then you're able to make friends and like start going out because I know when I first got um, to Barcelona I was just really scared and so I didn't hang out with many people and I guess I wasn't having as great of a time as I could have but then once I did I had like such an amazing time and such a different outlook on the city. So that's really important. Thank you for sharing. I think that's that's very common. It can take a little while to sort of acclimate and feel more comfortable. Um, sorry, was that Alina? Please go ahead. Oh, 
Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, with study abroad, I know a lot of students have anxiety about the study aspect of that, um, the going to school in a different country. Um, I know for me, like I was very much like I need to study and I need to do these things. Um, but the awesome thing about study abroad and especially with AIFS programs is that your professors, your classes are really going to use the city that you're in to teach you. And that is going to become your classroom and having those experiences in the city are just as important as you know going to your lecture and that your professors are going to understand that so i think it's important to just keep in mind that your experiences going to college here in the united states are are not going to be the same as the ones that you're having um, as you're studying abroad and to yes take school seriously but also know that you know the experiences that you're having out in your community are are crucial to that study abroad um, education Thank you so much. Yes, we hope that somebody mentioned um, excursions within your classes. I would say um, we very much try to incorporate the study abroad location into much of the curriculum on our programs. Um, but additionally, you know, being able to do um, a walking tour or a museum visit with your resident director, it's all a learning experience, whether you're in the classroom or not. Um, we hope that the full study abroad experience, you know, is a learning experience for you. Yeah, and I would just like to um, jump off of what Elena was saying. I think, you know, your professors know that you are studying abroad and that, you know, your purpose isn't, you know, to stay locked in your room studying. Of course, like, make sure you do study, but, um, you know, they're aware of that. And I think just having, like, an open line of communication with them is so beneficial. Like, our professors in Salamanca, they really established, you know, like, come to class, but, like, if you miss like a day or two because your flight is late or something like that, you know, just let us know and that's okay. Um, and also like another thing with the excursion, um, you know, something I really loved was um, some of my classes had us, um, like for example, my international marketing class that I took in Salamanca um, had us go out to the main plaza and we had to uh, try and sell things to people that were just, you know, walking around the plaza, um, which was very, very interesting to see the dynamic of, you know, just the people who are from Salamanca um, and kind of interact with them in a way that we wouldn't have um, otherwise. Thank you. Does anybody else have any oh, class excursions? Or not. <laughs> nope, you're good. Um, I also know, I know that um, many of our students notice a difference between potentially the U.S. teaching style and um, the instruction style where you're studying. Would any of you like to speak to that? Or um, was that something that was challenging? How did you kind of navigate that difference? Yeah, I can speak on that a little bit. I know um, personally from like me in the US, there our teaching structure is um, module, 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 test and repeat it and repeat it and repeat it till the end. And um, when I was in Spain, it was learning, midterm and final. So there were only two tests and the rest of the time was spent um, learning through PowerPoints, through conversations, through activities and like real world applicable scenarios, which were much more interesting to learn about and a lot easier to comprehend just because you could apply them to things you already know. Like for example, my favorite store is Zara and that's huge in Spain. And so in international marketing, we talked about a lot of how Zara and their parent company Inditex um, markets. And so stuff like that, it just makes it relatable to the class and it's a lot more interesting to me. Great, yes, I think many students um, in the European teaching style have, you know, just the midterm and the final. So that can really be an adjustment um, to hold yourself accountable to um, studying for the rest of the of the term. And thank you for that example. I. I I love those instances where you're able to connect your coursework to your specific location of study and, and the culture there. I'm curious if we have any um, other points that any, any of our alumni would like to add or speak to. Um, Brittany, if you have any questions, please feel free to add those in the chat. I know you all were talking about London and Barcelona already, but happy to open this up to more of a conversation if anybody has more they would like to share. I am interested in um, studying abroad. Um, however, I don't, I guess I don't know where to start as far as like choosing a place to go. 
um, necessarily. So um, how did you guys narrow that down to say like, this is where I would like to attend? Um, for me, I knew my main thing was, okay, I love the Spanish culture. Like I wanna go somewhere where everyone's gonna speak Spanish. And I had traveled places like in the Caribbean and like um, Central America. So I'm like, okay, those are closer to the US. But I was like, well, I've never been to Europe. That would be cool. And so basically my thought process was, hmm, okay, that would be fun. That would be cool. Like until I found a specific spot and then everything started to click and it was like, oh, they have the mountains. Oh, they have the beach. Oh, they have the city. They have shopping. They have this, they have that. So I think it doesn't have to be such a big thing of like figuring out where you want to go, but more so just identifying what you like and then looking at the locations that align with what you like. And then on top of that, seeing if those also align with the courses you need to take, because that's kind of like the cherry on top to find that perfect location. Yeah, sort of jumping off of that. I mean, I know like when you're first, you know, thinking about study abroad, it's like the world is your oyster. There are so many places to go. There are so many things to do and it can just be overwhelming. Um, so I, I know for me, I was like, okay, well, well, what are the, the key goals that I have? What do I wanna get out of my experience? For me, tangible skills were really important. So learning how to speak Spanish, learning how to travel on my own, those were really crucial things. Um, so I sort of narrowed it down in terms of like, okay, well, what are, First, what's a Spanish speaking country that I can study abroad in? And second, what's one that's maybe a hub that will allow me to travel to a bunch of other places? So I sort of narrowed it down to Spain. And then I was like, okay, well, I really want an immersive experience. I want to feel, you know, like I'm I'm in a city, but I'm also really just among Spaniards. So I chose a smaller city and eventually like looking at climate, I was like, Granada is it for me. Um, so I think, you know, you just sort of need to figure out what you like, what your goals are. And then, you know, it's pretty easy to sort of narrow it down from there. I would just say, you know, don't let the overwhelming like opportunities that you have with study abroad sort of paralyze you and keep you from, from sort of making decisions. There are just, you know, anything you want is really possible once you sort of determine what, what those goals and what those wants are. I also think the weather point is a really big deal. Cause like, I did not look at anybody's weather thermometer, whatever. And I got to London and Spain wearing a little coat in the winter, not realizing, okay, this is going to be like Virginia. Like it's going to be 40 degrees. So yeah, that's really important to look at. Like if you want to go somewhere that's going to have all four seasons, maybe go to Barcelona or maybe go somewhere in Europe. There's further places in Eastern Europe. It's going to be cold for a while. You could go to South America. It's going to be hot the whole time. So it's like determining what you want in those little aspects too. And I would also add too, you know, studying abroad in a place like Europe, it is so easy and so affordable to like hop around to other places. So you know, when you pick, you know, a home location, like that's obviously probably where you're going to spend most of your time. But if you also know that, like, like for me, I'm a Spanish minor, I've been speaking Spanish for eight years total now. And, you know, I wanted to study abroad in a Spanish speaking country, but I knew like, if I could just go anywhere in Europe, then I would be able to experience that. And I did get to spend some time in Barcelona, which was, you know, something I definitely wanted to do, even though I picked London, just because it more aligned with like my English goals because I'd always, you know, studied English authors and that was just really what my passion was. But I knew having like easy access to like kind of the rest of Europe made me feel comfortable in that decision because I knew I would be able to, you know, plan with friends and just kind of like go anywhere that I really wanted to go to. Thank you all so much for sharing. I don't know if this is helpful advice, but you can't go wrong. Um, everywhere will have its pros and cons and you'll have different um, you know, benefits and outcomes from every location, but definitely, as everybody said, you know, consider what's most important to you, what classes you need to take, um, and go from there. Brittany, did you have any other questions for the group, or do our, our ambassadors have anything else they'd like to share? Actually, I just thought of another question. Um, sure. When it came to, like, funding for the trip, how did that work, um, necessarily, and also, um, my other question, did you work alongside um, your advisor when it came to you trying to figure out like going for study abroad? Um, so for funding, um, 
I know some schools, so it's important to talk to your university specifically. I know some schools allow you to use um, an academic scholarship that you have for your school and put it towards stay abroad because it's like technically that semester, you're not gonna use it at all if you don't go to your school. So they might let you just use that scholarship. Um, in addition to that, AIFS has a lot of different scholarship opportunities that you can obtain through um, either um, need-based or through like writing an essay and potentially receiving a scholarship. And there's so many scholarships just online that you can look up that are related to study abroad. So there's a lot out there. It's just like about the time you're willing to put into it to find them. Um, and then when it came to like making schedules, um, personally for me, I go to a smaller school and study abroad isn't common. So I had to take a lot of initiative to kind of figure out what my schedule was going to look like and ensure that I was going to graduate on my own and then present it to my teachers and just walk them through how it would work in, um, for that semester and in totality with me graduating on time. So again, I think it depends on where you go and how large the study abroad presence is at your school. Um, but also you can always work with um, people from AIFS to help you. Um, with your scheduling as well. So that's always nice. Yeah, in here real quick. Oh, go ahead, Natalie. Oh, sorry. I was just going to um, do my piece, but you can you can go real quick. Sorry. <laughs> oh, sure. I was just going to say, um, I, Brittany, where do you go to school, if you don't mind sharing? I go to Ball State University. Ball State? Great. Mm -hmm. um, so I would recommend definitely working with the study abroad office there. Um, some institutions do allow financial aid to transfer, whether that's um, your aid package, if that's academic scholarships, depending on um, what your university decides can transfer to an outside study abroad program, we're happy to accept any of that funding. Um, we also do offer scholarships, as Rachel mentioned, so you can apply for those separately through AIFS. Um, there are a number of external study abroad scholarships that are run through national organizations um, that you can apply for and use towards any program that you choose. Um, so I shared a link here and Maura also shared a link to the Ball State Study Abroad Office and contact that you wanna be in touch with. Um, your study abroad office, well, and your academic advisor more than likely will help you determine um, what classes you should choose and how you get those approved. Natalie, feel free to share your experience too. Oh, I was just going to say really quickly, I put in um, Kelly Kirkwood's information there. She's in the study abroad office at Ball State and she is fabulous. She is super duper helpful, super patient. She has all of the energy in the world and she is happy to help you if you need anything at all. So um, definitely click on her info and make an appointment to chat with her. Sorry, go ahead, Natalie. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're good. No worries. Um, yeah, I was just going to say um, what Katie was talking about with the study abroad office um, was pretty on point. Um, this is speaks more to myself, but um, I knew I wanted to study abroad for a while and kind of just put off the whole process because, you know, it is kind of overwhelming. Um, and so it wasn't until a couple months before the end of the uh, fall semester, but I studied abroad in spring 2020. So fall 2019, um, when I just went to the study ab abroad office at my school and was like, hey, like, I need to go abroad, like I want to go abroad, I need to talk to someone because I have no idea what's going on. Um, but, you know, I, I sat down with my advisor, my study abroad advisor, um, and we really just talked it out and looked at classes um, and ended up choosing the Salamanca program. And at that point, um, you know, I had a list of classes and I brought it over to my um, academic advisor and he, you know, took a look at it, you know. So I, I feel like, um, you know, it definitely is school by school, but you're not going to be totally in the dark, regardless of what your school is, you know, you're going to be able to, you know, talk it out with your advisor, talk it out with people at AAFS and just make sure that, you know, your courses line up um, and stuff. So yeah, I know, I know it can be overwhelming, um, but, um, you know, it will, it will work out. Thank you. All that is fantastic advice. And there are many, many people at your university who are able and willing to help you um, definitely get in touch with Kelly. You may also work with the financial aid office if you're transferring aid, but the study abroad office is the best place to start and they can point you towards any, any other um, contacts that you may need to work with that you're at your home school. Any other questions, Brittany, or anything else our ambassadors would like to share? No, that wraps up all of my questions. Thank you guys for answering. Thank you so much. And um, you know how to reach us if you have any other 
questions. Um, all of our program information is up to date on our website. Um, we are accepting applications for summer 2021 and beyond, and we're hopeful um, to be able to resume travel soon and have students abroad again soon. Um, anything else our ambassadors would like to share or Mora before we wrap up? Okay. Well, thanks again, Brittany. Um, thank you to all of our panelists today for your time. And um, go ahead and end the session now if everybody is, is all set. All right. Thank thanks you so again. much. Thanks for everyone for uh, joining us today. All right, thank you.